What's up guys? It's me, Tiv, and I'm in New York City to watch Sam Bakeman frieds criminal trial in person. As I've stated before, the trial will not be televised. There are no phones, electronics, or cameras allowed in the courtroom, so I've been going in person every single day to watch the trial, and I'll be posting updates here on YouTube, on Twitter, on Substack, etc. So if you'd like to follow along, feel free to. If not, it's fine. Anyway, last week we saw two of Sam's closest friends, Adam Yadidia and Gary Wong, testify against him. I'm expecting this week to be even spicier though, because we are anticipating Caroline Ellison's testimony. Caroline is the star witness of the Sam Bakeman Freed criminal trial. I might do a totally separate video on Caroline Ellison's backstory and her relationship with Sam Bakeman Freed, but for now, for those of you who don't know, Caroline Ellison was the CEO of Alameda Research, as well as Sam Bakeman Freed's on-again, off-again girlfriend. In this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what SBF has said about Caroline Ellison's state of mind around the collapse, as well as maybe a few things we might expect in her testimony. During one of my in-person interviews, Sam told me that Caroline never actually wanted to be CEO of Alameda. He said that she was not happy as CEO because her life became complicated and unpleasant and stressful, and that she was asked to do a lot more than she ever signed up for, and he then claims that she fucked it up, clearly trying to displace a lot of the blame here onto Caroline Ellison. Sam stated that after the shit show started, the word she used to describe to me how she was feeling was relieved. This sort of sounded alarm bells in my head, so I asked, why was that? Did did she feel she was having to conceal a lot? And Sam stated, I think it took a lot of pressure off her in a lot of ways. I don't know if it was so much concealing. I think it was like worrying and it was like stressful as shit. And all of a sudden there was no risk anymore. Like the risk had happened. And so there's sort of no more risk. And I think coming to terms with the maximally bad outcome from her perspective made everything simpler because it meant nothing worse could happen. And that's my basic sense of where her head is at. So that was Sam's description of where Caroline Ellison's head was at around the collapse. Sam also sent me a bunch of documents while he was on house arrest, and one of the documents included a transcript of Caroline Ellison's allocution, or in other words, the statements she made in court when she was pleading guilty to criminal charges. So I think that looking at this document might actually offer us a little glimpse into what we can expect from her testimony in the coming days. Sorry to cut the video off midway, but I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Claims Market. A lot of people who watch my videos are actually fellow bankruptcy creditors. A lot of you have been affected by Celsius like me, or obviously FTX. Claims Market basically offers an option for those of you who are fellow bankruptcy creditors, but might be in need of immediate liquidity. It's basically a marketplace where you can list your bankruptcy claim for sale, and over 40 onboarded buyers and institutional investors will compete and bid for your claim. Claims can be sold quite quickly, sometimes even the same day, and you can view this on a transparent transaction history. Claims Market is credible, and they've actually transacted the most crypto claims in all bankruptcy cases, including FTX. Once a trade is confirmed, buyers are contractually obligated to send payment to the seller within 48 hours. I also just wanted to include this brief note that the price that FTX claims have been selling for recently are at the highest they've ever been. Again, I would never tell you what to do with your money, but if you do want to sell or would rather reinvest your money back into the market or just need Need immediate liquidity, then Claims Market is a great option for those of you who are suffering through these bankruptcies. You can find Claims Market on Twitter at claims underscore market, on YouTube at Claims Market, and on LinkedIn they're under Cherokee Acquisitions. So when Caroline Ellison pled guilty to criminal charges in court, she stated that from 2019 through 2022, I was aware that Alameda was provided access to a borrowing facility on FTX.com, the crypto exchange run by Mr. Bankman Freed. I understood that FTX executives had implemented special settings on Alameda Alameda's FTX.com account that permitted Alameda to maintain negative balances in various fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies. In practical terms, this arrangement permitted Alameda access to an unlimited line of credit without being required to post collateral, without having to pay interest on negative balances, and without being subject to margin calls or FTX.com's liquidation protocols. I understood that if Alameda's FTX accounts had significant negative balances in any particular currency, it meant that Alameda was borrowing funds that FTX is customers had deposited onto the exchange. While I was co-CEO and then CEO, I understood that Alameda had made numerous large illiquid venture investments that had lent money to Mr. Bankman Freed and other FTX executives. I also understood that Alameda had financed these investments with short-term and open-term loans worth several billion dollars from external lenders in the crypto industry. When many of those loans were recalled by Alameda's lenders in and around June 2022, I agreed with others to borrow several billion dollars from FTX 
FTX to repay those loans. I understood that FTX would need to use customer funds to finance its loans to Alameda. I also understood that many FTX customers invested in crypto derivatives and that most FTX customers did not expect that FTX would lend out their digital asset holdings and fiat currency deposits to Alameda in this fashion. From in and around July 2022 through at least October 2022, I agreed with Mr. Bankman Fried and others to provide materially misleading financial statements to Alameda's lenders. In furtherance of this agreement, for example, we prepared certain quarterly balance sheets that concealed the extent of Alameda's borrowing and the billions of dollars in loans that Alameda had made to FTX executives and to related parties. I also understood that FTX had not disclosed to FTX equity investors that Alameda could borrow a potentially unlimited amount from FTX, thereby putting customer assets at risk. I agreed with Mr. Bankman Fried and others not to publicly disclose the true nature of the relationship between Alameda and FTX, including Alameda's credit arrangement. I also understood that Mr. Bankman Fried and others funded certain investments in amounts more than $10,000 with customer funds that FTX had lent to Alameda. The investments were done in the name of Alameda instead of FTX in order to conceal the source and nature of those funds. She then says, I am truly sorry for what I did. I knew it was wrong. And I want to apologize for my actions to the affected customers of FTX, lenders to Alameda, and investors in FTX. Since FTX and Alameda collapsed in November 2022, I have worked hard to assist with the recovery of assets for the benefit of customers and to cooperate with the government's investigation. I am here today to accept responsibility for my actions by pleading guilty. I personally wasn't able to find this entire allocution publicly online prior to receiving it from Sam, but I think it's very relevant right now because I think it probably offers a glimpse into some of the statements Caroline Ellison might make in court this week. Anyway, I just wanted to make this quick little video of what we might expect from Caroline Ellison's testimony. I might make a separate video just on Caroline Ellison and some of the details of her and Sam Bakeman frieds relationship, but there's a lot to unpack there. So this was just a quick video before I actually go to bed super early to head to trial tomorrow. So I'll be posting more updates here. I've also posted some excerpts from some of the documents that Sam Bakeman fried sent me over house arrest, as well as some snippets from our in-person conversations for my paid Twitter and my paid Substack subscribers. So if you're interested in seeing that, feel free to subscribe to me, but you obviously don't have to if you have zero interest in this. So anyway, I love you all so very much. It's going to be a wild week.